An X-ray photon can interact with an electron in a many different ways. One of the way of interaction of a photon with an electron is called a Compton effect. It is when the incident photon is going to hit with an electron so that it's going to ionize this electron. So this electron is going to out from its energy level and the photon is still have enough energy to travel so it's going to scatter out after it hits with an electron. So this photon is going to call as a scattered photon and this electron is going to call it as a scattered electron. There is a reason why I drew these two photons with the different colors because the blue color is associated with the higher energy level while the red color is associated, is associated with the lower energy level. So the energy of an incident photon is going to be split to the two parts, to the energy of a scattered photon plus to the kinetic energy of a scattered electron. So while well, every time when the photon hits with an electron, this energy is going to be split differently. For example, 60% might go to the scattered photon and 40% go to the electron or vice versa. And one thing which is going to tell us how they are going to split is this angle um, of the scattered photon. So this angle phi actually defines how this energy is going to be distributed. So it appears if it denotes the wavelengths of the incident photon is a lambda zero and the wavelengths of the scattered photon is a lambda prime, then the difference between the wavelengths is going to be equal to the h over mc multiplied to the one minus cosine of phi, where h is the Planck's constant, m is going to be mass of an electron and c is the speed of light. So here this difference between the wavelengths is equal to this measurement which obviously depends on this angle. So let's try to make some analysis on this first of all. So please note that the frequency is proportional to the energy of the photon because we've got an equation energy of the photon is equal to the Planck's constant multiplied to its frequency, right? As the frequency is higher, the energy is higher. So basically, the blue color has higher frequency than the red one, so that it is associated with a higher energy level. At the same time, we can substitute the F with the C over lambda, so that the equation of an energy can be written as the H multiplied to the C over lambda, where H is the Planck's constant, C is the speed of light, and lambda is the wavelength. So the wavelength is inversely proportional to the energy. It means that the higher wavelengths uh, of a photon, it's going to have lower energy. So obviously, the in incident photon have higher energy and smaller wavelengths than the scattered photon. Now we are going to talk about how, in which cases, the maximum energy is going to be given to the scattered photon. Uh, it means that corresponding with minimum energy to the scattered electron. And at which angle the minimum energy is going to be given to the photon, right? So let's consider this case when the phi is equal to the zero. Right? In this case, lambda prime minus lambda zero is equal to the h over mc, so which is going to be 1 minus cosine of zero degrees. So this cosine of zero, as we know, is equal to the 1. So it means that the right-hand side of this equation becomes equal to the zero, which leads to the equation that the lambda prime is equal to the lambda zero. It means that the wavelengths of an incident photon is equal to the wavelengths of the scattered photon. So the whole energy is going to be given to the scattered photon. No energy is going to be given to the electron, which is obviously not feasible, right? So, but, but we need to know that if phi is equal to the zero degrees, the whole energy is going to be given to the scattered photon. Maximum energy to the scattered photon, minimum energy to the scattered electron. So it means that as we increase this angle, so the energy which is given to the electron is going to be increased and the energy which is given to the scattered photon is going to be decreased and at some point we are going to give the maximum energy to the electron and this happens when the phi is equal to the 180 degrees. So basically the lambda prime minus lambda zero is equal to the h over mc 
1 minus cosine of 180 degrees, right? Say so 100 uh, cosine of 180 degrees is equal to the minus 1. By the way, so if we just substitute the minus 1, we are going to obtain plus 2. It's going to be 2h over mc. So the difference between the wavelengths of the scattered photon and the incident photon is maximum when 100, so when phi is equal to 180 degrees. It means that so the maximum energy loss happens when phi is equal to the 180 degrees. So let's talk about this problem by solving this problem. So if the maximum energy given to an electron during the Compton effect is equal to the 30 kilo electron volt, what is the wavelength of the incident photon? So basically, we need to, to like work with the formulas and try to figure out what is the lambda zero, right? Good. So the first formula which we're going to use is the energy of the incident photon is equal to the energy of the scattered one plus the kinetic energy of an electron, right? So we're given the kinetic energy, so let me write down that the kinetic energy of an electron is equal to the E0 minus E prime. At the same time, we know how to connect the energy with the wavelengths, right? So here we've just got this formula, so the energy is equal to the Planck's constant multiplied is the speed of light over the wavelengths of a photon. It's going to be hc over lambda zero minus hc over lambda prime. Okay, so let me take out the hc from the brackets. It's going to be 1 over lambda zero minus 1 over lambda prime. By given the common denominator, we can write down the equation of the kinetic energy. It's going to be hc multiplied to the lambda prime minus lambda zero over lambda zero multiplied to the lambda prime. So from here, I would like to find out lambda zero multiplied to the lambda prime. So this term is going to go out. I'm going to just substitute this with this kinetic energy of an electron. And this kinetic energy basically is going to substitute this term here so that I, I will get this equation lambda zero multiplied to the lambda prime is equal to the hc lambda prime minus lambda zero over kinetic energy of the electron. So now we need to try to f make the analysis and try to figure out what does it mean this lambda prime minus lambda zero. So if you remember, so here in the description it is given that the maximum energy is given to an electron, right? So here we just discussed that the maximum energy is given to the electron when this angle phi is equal to the 180 degrees. It means that the wavelength difference is equal to the 2h over mc. So we've got this equation. So the maximum energy is given to the electron to an electron when phi is equal to 180 degrees it means that the lambda prime minus lambda zero is equal to the 2h over mc right so from here we we we, we can substitute actually lambda prime minus lambda zero as a 2h over mc and also we can try to substitute the lambda, so let me find out the lambda zero from here. So the lambda zero from here is going to be lambda prime oh, lambda prime, sorry. So the lambda prime is going to be equal to the lambda zero plus th over mc. So I'm going to just substitute this was here and lambda prime minus lambda zero with this term and let's let's try to do this. So the lambda zero multiplied to the lambda zero plus two h over m c is equal to the h c multiplied to two um, h over m c divided to the kinetic energy of an electron, right? 
So like basically I've got an quadratic equation which depends on the lambda zero and I just need to calculate what's the lambda zero, right? So let's open up the brackets and try to simplify the things here. So it's gonna be lambda zero in the square. So let me put the zero down. So plus T H over M C multiplied to the lambda zero, right? And so I can just cancel these two things here. And what I'm going to have here is minus T H squared divided to the M K A. So where K is going to be kinetic energy of an electron, which is given, and M is the mass of an uh, electron in the rest, which is also given. So if we put all the numbers together here, we are going to get the lambda square plus. So the Planck's constant is given, mass of electron is given, the C, the speed of light is also given. If we just multiply those numbers, we will get 4.85 times 10 in the power of minus 12 lambda zero plus uh, minus t multiplied to the 10 in the power of minus 20 t, it's equal to the zero. So by just using the formulas to find the roots of the quadratic equation, we can obtain that the lambda is equal to the 11.8 times 10 in the power of minus 12 meters.